Good morning. This is the JP Denell podcast, YouTube exclusive with myself, JP Denell, and Lucas Pinkard. What's up, buddy? What's going on, Pumpkin? How are you doing, my man? I am, uh, you know, doing pretty well. We good. got uh, a lot of good stuff happening at the house. This beard is getting uh, longer and more grab adapt. <laughs> so let's uh, let's raise some money for America's Mighty Warriors and get rid of this thing. Because I'm down. Mostly because you're ready to see me at. Uh, at naval standards. I mean, whatever. It's fine. You just want to see whether or not my jawline is fabricated or if it's <laughs> legit. Like, let's, let's that might be, be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I was recently at an FTX that myself and Matt Hasby were doing. How That's is what, Matt Hasby? Man, he's awesome. Yeah. When is, doing very when is well. he going to come on the show? He's, you know what? He's been dodging us. Like he he came in and, uh, and we nicked him, but, uh, but he dodged us. He got out of the way of it. Yeah, when are we getting Matt on the show? Uh, hopefully, hopefully in the very near future. All right, I'm excited awesome. about that. He um, seems like a cool dude. Yeah. So when I get to listen to other instructors talk uh, and teach, it'll prompt different thoughts for things that I need to be focused on and working on. And so I'll either take direct quotes for them or alter their quotes to fit like kind of like what I have going on in my life. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I wrote down recently was, I hurt my boss's efficiency when they have to chase down information from me, mm. I need to do a better job at feeding my boss information. So this thought stemmed from just a discussion with a client in regards to they feel like they're being micromanaged okay, because their boss is constantly asking them for updates and the response was, you know, just a shift in your mindset Mm -hmm. of thinking like, actually I hurt my boss's efficiency when they have to chase down information for me. Because if your boss is having to chase down information from you, what are they not able to be doing right now? It's all the high level strategic things that your leadership should be doing. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, one of the things that we teach at Echelon Front under, the principle of decentralized command is empowering your people to go out there and make decisions based off the parameters that you set for them. Right. Well, if my boss has giving, given me that authority and that trust and that respect go, to go out and operate and do things, I need to reciprocate that by feeding them information of the status of what's happening, what's going on, because I also need to understand and realize that my boss needs these things. These are things that my boss and my leadership need to know about, like the status of the project. Are we ahead of schedule? Are we behind schedule? How's our budget? You know, just all the, all the things that are important, like safety, like, Hey, are there any reportable injuries? How's the morale of the people? How's the op tempo? Are we running our people too hard? You know, um, is there fatigue starting to creep in? Like all these, these things that are very important. I need to be very mindful that I'm feeding this information to my leadership so that they can also have alignment with their leadership. They can have alignment with me. They can have alignment with their peers and they can have a better understanding of what's going on. You know, they say, you know, getting a pulse of what's happening for your people, give that information to your leadership so that they can take it and do what's best for you and your team. You have to, you have to shift your mindset that like, you're not being micromanaged. You might feel like that and okay. Hey, That might be the case. But if you are being micromanaged, the thing you should ask yourself is why? Why are you being micromanaged? What are you not doing correctly that's causing your leadership to now be more hands-on, to be more in the details and the weeds, as I say, of what you have going on? So if I can shift my mindset to, hey, you know, one, my leadership trusts me, they respect me. They need this information. I should be feeding this information to my leadership. Um, and, you know, understand that you and your leadership have alignment. Like, your leadership wants you to win. They want you to be successful. So it was just a, a thought that I wrote down, and uh, I thought it would be, you know, a good one for us to share, uh, yeah. even if that was all that we shared. And But I'm sure we could open up the door and, and discuss this a little bit deeper. Well, I, I think that that's an important thing to do because there's so many times where we – but it, it was always told to me that like um, pressure from above is authority pressure from below is rebellion. 
And one of the things that we often do is we find ourselves, there's, there's a parable about this in, in the New Testament where a guy goes, he owes uh, like um, basically like a hundred bucks to the king. He goes to the king and he asks for his hundred bucks or, you know, for, for the king to forgive him for this hundred dollar debt. And the king forgives him. And as he's going on his way home, he finds a guy that owes him a dollar and he has him thrown into debtor's prison. And then the guy goes back before the king, and the king's like, I forgave you a, a tremendous debt, and you threw this guy, you had us throw this guy into prison for a dollar. Now that I've heard about this, like, not only do you owe me what, you know, I forgave you for, but now you're taking his place in the prison, and that guy's going free, because this is yeah. ridiculous. So the, the reason I bring that up is because there are so many of us, especially if we're in kind of that middle management thing, where we don't like our boss micromanaging us. But we also don't recognize that we're micromanaging other people for the exact same reason that yeah. we can't do our job efficiently if, you know, the people under us aren't giving us that information that we need in order to for us to be able to look up and out. But when our boss is asking for that information, like we we're like, oh, why is he micromanaging me? You know, blah, blah, blah. So we've got this different set of expectations for uh, our team than we do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if we're doing an honest self-assessment, like what are some things we can do to recognize that maybe we're holding a, uh, I believe it's called a double standard. Maybe we're holding a double standard when it comes to what our expectations are from our team and what our boss's expectations should be of us. Um, okay. So you asked, how do we do that evaluation to become more self-aware? Yeah. How do we how do we acknowledge that we're holding a double standard or what things in an honest self-assessment can we do to kind of reveal that to us? So I think that's why podcasts like this and Jocko's and a lot of other great podcasts that are out there that provide knowledge are important because once you hear these things, you now have zero excuses as to why you can't make change. Yeah. If you didn't understand that this is a problem, no one's ever told you that it's never been taught to you. You can get away with it. And I mean, ignorance is bliss, you know, kind of comes into yeah. play. But now that it's like, Hey, you're hearing this. All it is, is you sitting down and doing that assessment and being honest with yourself and saying, am I too hands on with my people? Yes or no. And if you truly can't evaluate that, then I would err on the side of yes, you are. Yeah, probably. That's why we do the balance assessment at Echelon Front. Mm -hmm. In decentralized command, it's broken down into four different categories, and each of those categories has five different places that you can measure yourself. One of them, dead center, means that you are perfectly executing it. I have none of those dead center. Neither like do I, I have, because what is it? It's like five areas or four areas in each one of those four areas where you do the evaluation yep. or something yep. like that for your score. I've, every time I'm like, oh yeah, I got this one. And I read the description and I'm like, nope, yep, dead center. I'll read the one just slightly to the right or slightly to the left of it. And I'm like, ah. That's actually where I'm at. That's actually more where I'm at. Yeah. I suck well, at this too. Well, because the, <laughs> well, we also designed that uh, balance assessment to be very difficult to be in the dead center. We use yeah. words like perfectly balances all information. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. You know, who can? Perfectly communicates, a, 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 you know, um, I'm sorry, like clearly communicates a plan that is perfectly understood and executed by all members of the team. You're like, yep. <laughs> nobody. That doesn't have anything to do with me. I just got idiots on my team that don't yeah. listen. Well, maybe <laughs> my people listened and they weren't doom scrolling on Instagram all the time and paying attention. They'd get it done. You know, you're like, what do you like? The, like, that's the thing. Like people like instantly want to look at their people and it's like, no, it's you. It's your communication. Yeah. And so if you are wanting to, to be a better leader, then look at yourself and ask yourself, am I talking in a manner that's, you know, conducive to building a, a good relationship? Am I establishing trust? Am I, you know, am I showing them respect? Am I listening when they communicate? Am I asking them for their ideas? Here's a good indicator. If you don't ask your people for their input, you're probably not doing decentralized command too well. This if you're true. just dictating the plan, because you know best, you're not doing decentralized command well. You're you are micromanaging. Now there I know somebody's saying, Well, my people are brand new. They don't know. I agree. Teach them, train them, talk to them. And even a brand new person, 
as I'm saying, hey, this is what we're doing. This is why we have to do it this way because if we don't do it this way, somebody can get injured, somebody can get killed. Hey, what are some thoughts that you have in regards to the way we're doing it right now? I'm just gonna ask them their thoughts. Like I'm not asking them to make a decision, I'm asking their thoughts. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Does this does um, does this seem like a, a good, solid, viable plan? Am I missing anything? Hey, with the with the weather changes that are supposed to happen this week, is there anything that you see that could cause problems? I wanna be I wanna be asking as many questions as I can to get them to think. I want them engaged, I want them communicating, and I want them to feel like I trust and respect their input and value their input, and I'm gonna to try to find ways to incorporate what they have to say into what we're doing. That's awesome. So that just think about what you're what you're saying to your people, how you're communicating, and if you're asking questions and including them, that's a good baseline. So in in follow up to that, like let's say, all right, maybe I'm not holding a double standard. Maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm frustrated that my boss is wanting to get this information from me because I'm more of a hands off person. Okay. But what that means is maybe I've let decentralized command go a little too far. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, it does, right? So when when we think that there's this, um, you know, that, oh, you know what? I've done decentralized command. This is one of my own leadership faults. I I have thought throughout my time as a leader that I was really great about decentralized command. The first time I read the principle, I was like, man, I do this so well. But then I was looking at it and, and after doing an honest assessment, I was like, hold on, I do this too much. Like I, I have gotten to the point in my leadership where it is not a matter of, you know, having good decentralized command. I've let it go so far that like there is no accountability at all. And I don't mean accountability in the sense of like disciplinary action or those kind of things. Yeah. Like the the people that I have given tasks to, they they don't want to mess up, right? But they also don't want to oftentimes uh, question the task that I've given them mm -hmm. because I'm like, this is yours. You can run with it. You can do whatever. They don't come and ask for clarifying questions, which means I haven't communicated well enough. I oftentimes don't figure that out until like, you know, I do my check-in a few days before a project is due. And I'm like, hey, how's this going? And they're like, oh, yeah, I really haven't. And then we, we're both like scrambling to try to get it together. Yeah. So then at that point, I become the easy button because, yep. hey, you know, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just get this done. Yep. I'll, I'll just bail them out at, at the last minute. So maybe you're in that position that you don't like the micromanagement because you think you're doing really great at decentralized command, but actually you've let your people go too far. How do you bring yourself back to center and come to the realization, hey, you know what? My boss is actually probably doing a pretty good job at this. This is something that I might need to clean up in my team. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you go about mopping up that damage when you've allowed decentralized to command to go too far? Yeah, you use the four steps of efficient communication that we teach at Echelon Front. You identify the problem, explain the consequences, take ownership, provide a solution. So I'm going to go to my team and I'm going to explain to them how I've been too decentralized and that it's a problem. You know, and I'm going to apologize and I'm going to describe, you know, the impact to them. If I'm too decentralized and I'm not communicating with my people, that means I have zero alignment. And because I don't have alignment, I can't give them guidance. I'm not a resource. I'm not around for them to ask questions. And when I've been too decentralized, people start to do things that they shouldn't be doing, not intentionally, but because I have not given them the proper guidance and and uh vision for where we need to be going and that's on me 100 percent. so then i'm going to find a solution that makes sense to my team based off of their personalities and skill sets in regards to how much how many touch points they need to be efficient and effective and and to stay on the path that's directed towards them so if all of this stuff is a skill set yep and being micromanaged is something that we have to learn how to maybe cope with, right? Yeah. And ask, and, and ask and, questions about whatever. Yeah. And the asterisk is there are times that you're gonna have to micromanage somebody and there's not, there's nothing wrong with that. If, yeah. if you were to come and, and help me teach shooting, let's just say you weren't going to be teaching shooting, but you're going to help run a shooting course with me. Mm hmm. And you're not comfortable with guns and you haven't done a lot of shooting like I have. Do you think I'm going to have to micromanage you for the first couple courses that we put together? No doubt. Why? 
because I know nothing. Exactly. And I, and if it's a shooting course, I know nothing, and therefore I am dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And is there also the possibility that you might be slightly nervous with this task I ask you to come help with? 200%. So there we go. Yeah. Now, but if I was to say, hey, Lucas, I understand this is something you're not comfortable with, you've never done before, I'm literally going to be here the whole time helping guide you. Here's some parameters in regards to the decisions you can make. Here's the things that you can do. Here's the things that are absolute no-goes because it will cause an unsafe environment. Here's the things that we need to be looking at. Again, I'm here. I'm supporting you the whole time. You're not going to be on the range by yourself. You're actually supporting me and what I'm teaching and just being an extra set of eyes. Are you going to feel a little more comfortable now? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's all it is. So I'm explaining to you that I will be hands-on, that I will be there to support you, that I'm going to teach you, equip you and coach you to give you the skill sets needed to be successful. That's a, that's a powerful tool to be able to hand to Mm -hmm. somebody if you're in leadership. Yep. Yeah. And because if I do that, you know that I'm doing that because I care about you. Yeah. And I don't have to say, hey, Lucas, I'm doing this because I care about you. But subconsciously, you know that I care about you. And you know that I'm doing it to take care of you, to keep you safe, to make you effective, and to get you some wins. Yeah. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. So last question sort of in the vein of of this that I've got is, okay, we... uh, we're in this situation. We feel like we're being micromanaged. Um, we've done the honest self-assessment and you know what? We're, we're actually with our team, you know, we're not dead center, but we're just one degree to the right or the left and just about everything. So we're doing a pretty good job. How do I approach my boss with uh, a good attitude about why they have decided to micromanage me? How do I have that conversation with them in a way that's respectful, but that also gets me the information that I need so that I can, you know, so that I'm not rebelling, Mm -hmm. but rather them becoming a better teammate. You have to understand that you are at fault. You cannot blame your leadership. If you blame your leadership, you you start sliding down the slope of playing the victim card. Yeah. You can't do that. You have to understand that. If you feel like you're being micromanaged, it's because you have done something wrong or you have not communicated your abilities properly or you have not shown your capabilities and your competencies correctly to your leadership because if they're micromanaging you, they're doing it because they care about you. They care about the work. It's a shift of your mindset because the natural mindset is, oh, they're doing it because they're controlling or, oh, they're doing it because they don't care or, oh, they're doing it because they just like to micromanage people. I have to shift my mindset to like, okay, no, if my boss is doing these things, what have I done wrong? And so then I'm going to have the conversation with my leadership in the mindset that I have done something wrong. So I'm going to use the same framework for having an efficient conversation. I'm going to sit down with you and be like, Hey Lucas, you know, I was, I appreciate you taking the time to, to sit down with me. Hey, you know, I'm frustrated with myself. You know, I've created this problem where I feel like I'm being micromanaged by you. And I know that's not your intent. And I know that I've created this situation and I just wanted to let you know that I'm sorry. To be honest, I don't know what I've done wrong or what I'm not doing properly. And so that's why I was hoping you and I could sit down, get some alignment on what I've been doing right, what I've been doing wrong, and just wanted to figure out some course corrections that you might have in mind in regards to what I need to be doing to earn your trust so that I can take these tasks on my hand, on, 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 on hand myself. I'm, you know how much humility that's going to require of somebody? Yes. yes. You know how many people are willing to do that? Very few. So that is why we have a problem with people feeling like they're micromanaged all the time because they're not willing to have the hard conversation. Yeah. Because that would be something I would want to know, right? But it's also like when I've been in those positions, I feel like I've had one of a, of, of a few things happen. One, I've just been irritated by it. And so I've, I've decided not to ask and to complain about my boss. 
no, he's micromanaging me. So, you know, you guys are all getting micromanaged now because this is what he's asking for me. We're just going to give him whatever info he wants or, uh, you know, he's doing this. And so, you know, I'm looking for something new because I'm tired of this crap. Yeah. Right. That's like, the easy. Yeah. That's the, that's the easy way out. But that's, that's also in those situations, totally been my ego talking in the couple of times where I have had the humility to have these conversations. Um, they they've gone exceedingly well except for one okay and so but the one the one that didn't go well had to do with using the term micromanagement because when my my superior when i use i said hey you know i, I kind of feel like i'm being micromanaged a little bit and i think that that has something to do with me i know i haven't been doing x y and z before i could finish he like laid into me about the fact that he's not a micromanager and yeah. jumped on that train. So l- let's say like going into that, like, yeah. So hey, what's that an indicator this, that, that, well, that's an ego indicator for him, right? Yep. For sure. Right. And then what's the indicator that you didn't do properly uh, soon enough? Go to him about it or have the relationship. That, right. So yeah. one, that's going to tell me one, I didn't bring this up sooner. Two, sure. I don't have the relationship that I thought I had. Uh-huh. And three, the actual, the most important one is I didn't disarm him soon enough through taking ownership. Yeah. Or, or so it could you, it just be bad timing. Like I didn't read the situation on that really well. Well, either, okay. Right? That's, you know? that's what that's very important to understand yeah. is the timing of the conversation. But if, if I had that conversation and he said that I would immediately, which I'm sure you did would probably apologize. Like, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm sorry, boss. I did not communicate that properly. Yeah, I wanted I'm to not, get defensive. I'm not saying that you're a micromanager. I'm saying I feel micromanaged, and I was ho- I was wondering if you could help me out. Yeah, I know that you're not a micromanager, and the fact that I feel this way is an indicator that I'm doing something wrong. So I was hoping you could give me some guidance and or direction. Yeah. So that would just be an indicator to me. Like, you know, like Oscar's question last week about reading somebody. Yeah, for sure. Like, okay, this happened. You didn't see it coming, but guess what? Follow it away. Yeah. Like that's literally, (laughs) that's going in my file. Don't use this word with this guy. And that's, these are little indicators. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm willing to bet most humans don't like to be called a micromanager. No doubt. Yeah. So I think I'm going to now with... just file that. of just like, Oh, let's not use that word. Or if I'm going to use it, I'm going to be very clear. Like, Hey, I feel like I'm being micromanaged and I know that you're not a micromanager. Yeah. So I was hoping you could help me understand what I'm doing wrong. Cause I'm doing and or seeing or feeling something wrong. Could you give me some guidance? Yeah. I think what I went with after that, I said, you know what? I, I used the wrong term. I'm sorry. Obviously, cool. obviously that's not, that's not what I meant, uh, was, was micromanagement because we all have a negative connotation where that's concerned. And he was like, definitely that's not the way blah, blah, blah. I was like, you, you are being much more intentional with follow up than you have ever been. And so I need to know, is that because of something that I've done? Like, am I not getting things to you quick enough? Or is this something that is, is kind of coming down the pike at you that, you know, your bosses are asking for, for something more. And he was like, I have been more intentional with follow up. And I was like, Oh, thank goodness. But right? like I found, I, I, I figured it out. Like I jiggled the, the, yeah, I jiggled the key in the log just long, just long enough to where it, it kind of softened the blow for him. But it, it does put us in that kind of defensive position where, you know, I'm not a micromanager. And my first thought was, do you want to look at these emails? Do you want to look at these emails and show me where this is not micromanaging? Yeah, because your ego got involved oh, right away. Oh, for sure. 100%. And when it's, you're playing ego versus ego, uh, that's a dangerous game. It's never a win. And if you're in a business situation, ego versus ego eventually could just end up coming down to rock, paper, rank. <laughs> and you're going to lose that if you're talking with your leadership. Yeah, it's a bad scenario. Which, obviously, we know if you're at that point, you have failed 10,001 times. Like, yep. if you ever get to the point where your boss is like, hey, I'm your boss and you need to shut up, you need to recognize you have failed. Yeah, we, lo- we already lost I mean, the you've lost so many things. You have zero leadership capital. Yep. Your account is in the negative and you need to go on the campaign to rebuilding up that, that relationship. 100%. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for fleshing that out with me. Let's go, my man. I love it. Hey, we appreciate you guys supporting the podcast. Uh, we love being on YouTube. YouTube is awesome because it's got an awesome community. Hey, we need your help. We need 
a little more engagement on here. Oh, uh, for whatever reason, our numbers have drastically dropped on YouTube. It's weird. Um, nothing's changed. And so we just want to show YouTube that we value this platform, that we use this platform to do good things, to help people, to create a community, to build value. So the more you guys can comment on here, like on here, share it, you know, copying and pasting the link and sharing it on social media. Encourage the uh, other people who are leaving questions, you yep, know, and be encouraging. Like that would be ideal. Uh, if you're able to, if you're not cool, we get it. We understand. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of extra time and effort and we know that time is valuable for you all. So the fact that you guys take the time to listen, we just want to say thank you. Um, you know, we talked about, uh, America's Mighty Warriors. So you go to America's Mighty Warriors dot org, and if you make a donation um, towards Lucas shaving his beard, we yeah. appreciate that. Just type in JPNL podcast in regards to the notes. If you do one of a hundred dollars or more, then you also get four free weeks of nutritional advice, coaching, and guide, guidance from First in Nutrition. So we appreciate their support. Uh, we appreciate all the support that you guys give us. So um, we hope that you guys are having an awesome week. You're going out there and you're building relationships. You're focused on what you can do can, to control the situation, your attitude, your work ethic, your integrity, your discipline. These are things that you can control. Uh, thank you so much for just the support that you guys always give the other uh, companies in our ecosystem, Little Cattle Co., On the Path Printing, Bruiser Arms, Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu, Echelon Front, Origin, and Jocko Fuel. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Go out there, keep getting after it, and remember to never settle.